So welcome back to another Blunt Lab video and this time I'm actually in front of the camera. Hello, this is me. Yay. So today we're actually going to be doing a review of a product. See, I've been looking for the perfect IP camera for a very long time because I've always had a surveillance system at home. It started out with analog cameras granted but I've always had a system because we live in the countryside and you get some pretty shady characters here in the UK that will go to the countryside with the intent of robbing you simply because it's far away from police and stuff they can do that and we've been robbed before as have most of our neighbours it's just part of where we live basically so we installed cameras probably more than 10 years ago now and since then we've not really had any issues but obviously the original cameras were pretty low resolution but it has helped us in an insurance case when the local bin lorry kind of broke the bumper off my dad's Land Rover and if with any luck I'll splice in the horribly blurry footage here but you can clearly see what happened. So I was looking at changing one of the cameras. See my front door camera has always been a bit strange. It started out with an analog camera but because it was using Cat5 cable and stuff, it ended up with a herringbone pattern, which looked horrible. So that wasn't great. So it ended up getting changed out for a Panasonic IP camera, but that thing was only like motion JPEG. It was a 640 by 480. It's a pretty rubbish camera, but it was the best camera in the system when I had all analog cameras. Now it's 2019 and I've upgraded at least a few of my cameras to HD cameras now and they're from various different brands. I think the one in our like car park area is a Honeywell, which isn't great. It's not like on with compatible or anything, but ultimately we're going HD and I wanted to find a good camera for the front door. So the requirements was it had to be a dome, that was a given, and it had to be on with compatible, hopefully. So I tried a few cheap ones and they were either not waterproof despite claims that they were waterproof they had gaping air vents in the back and you could literally pull the camera apart to reveal the circuit board or they just had rubbish software and I've never found the right camera but I thought for once I would try out a hike vision camera now I've been avoiding them for a while because there is some like that they have tie-ins with the Chinese government and stuff but they're very popular and they've been popping up all over the place in where I live and I think the final nail in the coffin was seeing like them in tiny shops just in the corner like they, they're obviously good for both small businesses and pretty big businesses so they probably are quite good for a home so I acquired this the DS2CD2125 FWD-IM and I remembered that right off the top of my head so we can break that down a bit it's the DC2CD means it's an IP camera so you can immediately throw that away so this is the 2125 I have no idea what all of that means I think the 2 means it's a dome camera the 12 means it's a 2 megapixel camera and I, I have no idea what the 5 means I, I really do not know what the 5 means FWD means it's got F for flash so it's got a memory card slot WD means it's fully wide dynamic range not some digital stuff it's got a true wide dynamic range the i on the end stands for infrared pretty much every hike vision camera has the i on the end because they're pretty much all infrared at this point infrared LEDs are just dirt cheap the m is quite a weird skew of these cameras where it has a hdmi output i didn't know that at the time when i bought this camera that it's like an option that's available but you don't often find it so I've got a camera with a HDMI port on it which is actually a bit of a shame and I'll go into reason the reasons why later so on my initial impressions of the camera was it's quite solid I don't actually have the camera to hand here simply because it's already installed on my front door but I have this other hike vision camera um, this is a SDI camera Ugh. yeah I bought this by accident thinking it'd work with my I've got a Hike Vision Turbo HD DVR thing, which I'm sure I'll do a future video on, but yeah, this is incompatible. But 
it's the same sort of design camera as the DC 2CD 2125FWD-IM. And yeah, it's all metal, cables come out the back, nice dome on it. It uses, I think these are Torx T10 screws, so they're not some stupid proprietary security bit, but at the same time they're not something that a robber's probably going to have on them. You know, now that I've made this video, I'm sure every robber's gone out to get a Torx T10 screwdriver. Now, ultimately, if you're close enough to be able to get the screws out on these cameras, you're too close because these cameras are like 2.8 millimeters, which is super wide. The camera is pretty easy to set up. You plug it into the network. With this specific model, the IM, you have to use power over Ethernet, which is fine because I was going to use power over Ethernet anyway. You don't have a 12 volt power option on this camera. Well, you do on the standard Dash I model, the M replaces the 12 volt for the HDMI port. In doing so, it makes the whole cable harness absolutely really impossible to bend. See how flexible this cable harness is. Now, granted, this has just a coaxial cable. It's not got, like, Ethernet on there, but still, it's so much more flexible. Yet the cable on the IM model, it's, like, near impossible to get it into the junction box, which was designed for the camera. So once it's all plugged in and stuff and installed on the junction box, which took probably a good 20 minutes to get it all installed on the wall, you can set an IP address, which is easy to do with the Hikevision Sadaptal. Why did they call it Sadap? Why couldn't they just call it IP Configurator or something? S Sadap means nothing to no one. Why? Anyway, I've, I've set an IP address, which is very simple to do. And once you've got an IP address on it, you can open it up. And this specific camera, once it's run the latest firmware, will work in Google Chrome, Firefox, without any plugins. Absolutely top notch. This is something that a lot of other cameras totally miss out on, and they require you to use ActiveX or just open the feed up in VLC or something, or really dodgy stuff. Now, granted, I would prefer if this was using like the HLS stream or something, whatever it is, where you get an actual live stream video player. But whatever it's doing, which I'm pretty sure is probably just some JavaScript or motion JPEG stuff in the background, it's doing a pretty decent job of it. So the settings page is all pretty self-explanatory. There's lots of options in here, even for some quite, even for some features that you don't expect on such a cheap camera. Things like line crossing detection, face detection, uh, missing item detection, like that's some really cool features for what is on that budget line of cameras. It's quite impressive. A few things I went and did is I went and disabled Hike Connect or whatever it's called this day of the month simply because I'm going to be running it through Xprotect and eventually I'm going to move all over to a Hike Vision DVR and I'll probably use Hike Connect on that. But I don't want to have to deal with Hike Connect on every camera. So I disabled that. I also went ahead and just played with some of the settings, like the image settings to get the best image settings out of it. I set a constant bit rate because variable bit rates are a bit annoying. It's just going to be my luck that the bit rate decides to be low when someone's smashing my front door in and I don't get their face so I set a constant bit rate of 4 megabits which is more than enough because this camera has a 2 megapixel sensor and the image qualities from that 2 megapixel sensor is pretty damn good I've had really no issues with this camera it's just been brilliant the 2.8 millimeter lens on it is super 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 wide and this is important because one of the other cameras I used had a 3.6 millimeter lens and it was too zoomed in you could not really see a lot of detail well you could see a lot of detail but it just wasn't covering the area I wanted so the wide angle lens on that was really quite nice but they also come in a 4 millimeter option and I believe this camera has a 6 millimeter lens on it and I'm pretty sure they're a standard M12 thread if you really wanted to go in there and change it. So you can put whatever lens you want on there, really. Now, there is some 
things to bear in mind with this camera it's not perfect you have to be careful in how you position the camera because you can get IR reflection on the internal dome see how this current camera is how the LEDs are actually under this white metal part that's bad that's especially bad on the 2125 which only has three big LEDs if you have one of them partially covered by the metal dome it's just going to be a horribly blurry image which isn't very cool now there is one more problem with this camera and it's software related it's the hike vision ivms 4200 program and the ivms 4500 mobile app hike vision do yourselves a favor go to xprotect and have a little chat with them and look at how they do their apps and then just steal it it's really surprising to see that the ivms program is an absolute horrible mess it just is once you get used to all of its quirks you can get around it but it's just not fun to use it's quite slow uses a lot of resources it's cluttered it's just not very fun like i like the xtech program because i can quickly open it and scroll through the timeline in about four seconds flat and find a, something that happened five minutes ago that's simple to do i can do that pretty much instantly if i see something happen outside i can simply go back scroll back really quickly with the hike vision program it takes probably five minutes just to open the program and then i have to find out the playback options manually search and then i get to go through the events and it's not perfect it's not a proper timeline like you get on xprotect where it's nice and smooth to scroll through it's a real shame but i can live with that ultimately because i still have xprotect running and i'm probably going to keep xprotect running i'll have them work in tandem both the high vision dvr and the xprotect system and that's simply because the xprotect's better got, got a better app experience and stuff but I think that the hike vision system will give better results in the long run for ultimately exporting recordings because exporting recordings it exports as an mp4 which is brilliant none of this stupid convert to an AVI that's 93 gigabytes so what do I think of the hike vision DCD2125 which is definitely not this camera because this is a an analog camera but it looks the same I think that they're very good quality cameras especially for the price I didn't pay a whole lot for that 2125 I'm going to leave you with some sample footage that's been recorded over the past couple months some stupid things that I've captured and whatever else I fancy to put in I'll also be sure to put in some nighttime footage so you can see how well this camera actually performs